Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. This is my E46 BMW. Today I'm going to do an oil change on it, followed by an inspection. And I'm going to be following uh, this little chart that I came up with based on the, uh, the BMW Service 1 inspection that you do every 15,000 miles. Um, I'll make this available in the description of the video in case you want to check that out and, and uh, follow it, follow along with it. Uh, but anyway, Let's get started. So I've jacked all four tires up off the ground because I'm just going to be doing an inspection. I'm going to be looking under the car, etc., etc. It's just a little easier if you have the whole thing suspended. If you only have two jack stands, then you can just do the front part and then the rear part. But remember to use wheel chocks, especially um, on the front wheels when you're raising the, the rear wheels by themselves because the front wheels just move freely and they don't have a, a parking brake to hold them in place. So really dangerous unless you use wheel chocks. Be safe. So BMW recommends uh, like 15,000 miles between oil changes. I personally believe that's too much. Um, I like to go with half of that, 7,500 miles. Um, it's been 6,500 since my last oil change, so it's all good. So first things first, I like to loosen the oil filter cap here. And I like to loosen this cap so that the oil drains down into the drain pan. I just do this carefully because it will kind of comes spilling out if you do this too fast. Now you can go out and get a 36 millimeter socket for this if you want to spend about 10 bucks or you can spend the same amount of money and get a 12 inch adjustable wrench. In my opinion this is the more versatile tool because you're going to use this in a lot more places. Uh, the only other place you're going to use this is to get off um, axle nuts so we can see some of the oils kind of peeking out there. And there we go. The oil is just draining down now. So I'll just kind of leave it up, cocked like that. I drove my car earlier, so the engine's still warm. Uh, warm oil always flows out a little bit better. Um, make sure that you've got a, a big enough drain pan. Remember, there are like seven quarts of oil in this thing, which is more than, a, than an average car. So make sure you've got a big enough drain pan. This one's like a five gallon. Um, remember to wear some gloves. And I'm using a, six, a 17 millimeter socket for this rather than a wrench because it's kind of recessed. So it's kind of easier to get it with a socket. Also be prepared for hot oil to hit your hand. You want to get it out of the way as soon as possible. And if you're good, you won't drop the drain plug. Here we go. Boom. Alrighty, we'll just let that drain. Good idea to have some paper towel ready for the drain plug. Your oil filter should come with a new O-ring and a new drain plug gasket. Make sure it does before you walk out of the store. I'm gonna go ahead and take your old drain plug gasket off and pop the new one on. Now, I could wait forever for this drip to stop, but it really doesn't matter. Not too tight. So use a little pocket screwdriver to lift out the old O-ring. Get our new O-ring. Sits down in this little groove here. Now I want to point out that there are two more O-rings on here, right here. These should be replaced. In fact, I was meaning to replace these on this job and I just kind of forgot to order them. But I'll, I'll dig up the part number and put it in the description. There are two of them. It's a good idea to do this because if these don't seal anymore, your, your oil filter is kind of not doing anything. So I think I have 170,000 miles. I think it's probably about time to change those. Anyway, pull out the old filter and install your new one. Right. So, put it down in there like that. The book says to torque this down to 18 foot-pounds, 
which, you know, pretty much just there till it stops. I don't think you need to go any further than that. I've never had any leaking problems. Make sure you dispose of this properly. Get a little funnel in there. This is a full one. I'm just adding the whole thing. And it looks like I've got about three quarts in here and I only need two. So I'll just be careful. Mm, about one. So let's see where we're at. Looks like it's perfect. Right there, that's full, that's empty. So, we're full. Although, I think it's a good idea to start it up and fill up the oil filter and then check our level. That'll cause a vacuum leak, by the way, if you don't put the, the cap back on when you start it. There we go. Perfect. Okay, that does it for the oil change. Now, of course, you're gonna recycle your oil, right? Taking it to your local auto parts store. So inspection item number one should be the air filter. Just unsnap little clasps. That back one's always hard to get to, isn't it? Who knows why they do these things these ways. So, it's a little dirty, but not terrible. This is about 7,000 miles ago or so. I think I can go another couple thousand until I replace it. But I'll just be sure to check it again pretty soon. Next, I'll check the uh, microfilter. Take a look at that. I also see dirt kind of around here, in here. Not too terrible, but again, I'll probably replace both of these. I'm thinking another 3,000 miles or so in my case. Your case might be different. You might decide to replace both of these filters every time you do an oil change. I think that's certainly not a bad thing to do. All up to you. Okay, let's check the power steering fluid. It's actually better to do this when it's cold, but it's all right, you can still do it when it's warm. And it should be between these two marks. I believe this is minimum when cold and I think max minimum when cold when hot, uh, but I'm not sure about that. I know that as long as it's between these two is where you need to be, these two. So I've removed the air filter box and the fan and fan shroud completely. Um, if you don't know how to do that, take a look at my common repair steps video. But the reason I, I've done this is so we can get a better sh um, view of the power steering hoses. You want to check these, make sure that they're not leaking, all covered with dirt and grime. If they're covered with dirt, that's like, you know, really caked with dirt, that's a sign that they're leaking. You, you'll be able to tell, it'll be all shiny. But, you know, inspect the bottom hose and inspect the return hose as much as you can see. They look really, really good on my car. Now, we also want to check the coolant hose, the radiator hose, and I can actually see there's some, uh, there's some green coolant that's leaked on and dried on top of the, the reservoir right here. And that can only come from the seam of where the, the rubber hose is clamped onto the plastic right here. So when these hoses go bad, you, coolant starts to leak out of those seams. And you can see it's actually even worse up here. There's a lot of crud around this one. And uh, that's actually worrying me. I'm thinking I should probably replace this upper hose as a preventative maintenance item. That would just be a good idea. Um, I see a spot of coolant, dried coolant right there. 
there should be you can see there's gray rtv where i've sealed my uh thermostat housing onto the engine block there the cylinder head um and that should have been completely universal all the way around it's kind of troubling me that there's a little spot right there but it's not too bad um let's look at the lower hose right here it actually looks really good i don't see any leaks anywhere i don't see any dried coolant around the the edges of the seams there so that one looks really good i think uh i just need to replace the upper hose and i'm going to check the level of the coolant here it's been a little while but i'm just doing this carefully yeah that's okay and um, i will confess that i checked this a couple days ago and i i actually added some coolant to bring the level up um, it was just, um, it wasn't much, it was maybe like half a gallon or a quarter gallon or something like that. Um, so I, I do know that coolant has been leaking out of here recently. That's why I've gone ahead and, and done this thorough of an inspection. And uh, I believe that where it was leaking from was the upper radiator hose, just slowly over a couple of months now. So I'll end up replacing that. Don't forget to check your brake fluid. Mine looks like it's definitely at the max line. The final fluid that you want to check is your windshield washer fluid and looks like I've got a completely full reservoir so I'm good there. So the biggest thing you want to do is get down under your car and just check for leaks everywhere. Um, first off I want to point out you can see there's a drop of oil here and then if you just take a step back and look underneath here especially if you looked at the oil pan it's leaking there's there's definitely oil that's still leaking and i did say in my oil filter housing gasket change video that if doing that job didn't stop the oil leak um, then i would also need to do my oil pan gasket and i believe that i do because i have uh pressure sprayed the bottom of my engine like a, a little a while ago and the fact that i see oil down here tells me that that uh that oil pan gasket needs to be changed so that'll be in an upcoming video also another thing to point out in my case there's another drop of coolant here so as it sits the coolant's dripping down and it's kind of dripping off the the bottom of the uh harmonic balancer there here's a real good shot of another part of the oil pan as you can see it's wet there there's definitely oil leaking so no doubt about it need to do the oil pan gasket on this car you want to come further back and check your transmission for leaks and you can see that the pan is just perfectly dry that's good that's the way it should be so i'm not too worried about that check the differential in the rear make sure it's not leaking make sure you don't have any shiny spots on the outer surface this is where the the cover joins it so just make sure it's nice and dry also check the the cv boots on your axles especially here at the tire Check that one, looks good. No cracks or tears anywhere. Spin it around, check the inner one. Same thing, mine look great. Let's check this side. I just spin it around completely. You'll know if they're tore, torn. You know, it's also a good idea to check the sides of the radiator here on either side where the plastic joins the aluminum make sure it's not leaking from there that side and we're going to check the other side as well make sure we don't see any evidence of leakage make sure the drain plug is good this is the power steering line that comes down from the reservoir that's the big one that comes down from the reservoir that's where it feeds into the pump make sure that's not leaking either mine looks great you want to check your wheel bearings make sure you don't have play just go side to side go up and down especially up and down if you've got play as you're rocking in and out like that then that's definitely your your wheel bearing if you've got play side to side like this in and out side to side then that's your tie rod ends so up and down and then side to side no play of course there are no tie rods in the back here so side to side up and down you're checking the the bearing in both cases and i got no play no play 
On the inside of the driver door, you should find a little chart right here that has the tire pressures on it. And it's supposed to be 32 in the front and 38 in the rear. I've got these green caps, which means that I've got nitrogen in my tires. So if these are low, I'll need to go to Costco to get them full filled. And it's at 30 in the front. So I probably will do that. Passenger front is also 30. So the driver's side rear is 34. And passenger side rear is also 34. It's a good thing to go and get one of these treadwear depth gauges. Um, this way you can just kind of monitor the, the wear of your tires. It's a good thing. Um, I have Michelin Pilot Super Sports. These are really, these are really, really sticky tires. They're absolutely great in the rain, but unfortunately they didn't come with a lot of tread wear to begin with and they wear out pretty easily. Um, I, I checked them when I bought them new and they came with 830 seconds all the way around, which is, you know, it should be around like 10 or, or 11, 30 seconds on the average tire. But anyway, let me go ahead and check them and see where they're at. And looks like they're at about 730 seconds. So that's not too great. Uh, I don't know how long it's been now. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's been six months or so. Actually, you know, maybe, maybe around 10 months. But yeah, around 7.30 seconds on the fronts. I'll check them all the way around, but I think it's a good thing to monitor that and uh, just keep track of how fast they're going to wear out. This is the passenger front. And yeah, 7.30 seconds on that one as well. So this is passenger rear. And yeah, these are also at 730 seconds. So at least they're they're wearing pretty evenly. Now would be a good time to rotate your tires. You know, every 7,500 miles or so is good. As long as you just do it regularly, that's what that's that's all that matters. In my particular case, I can't rotate my tires because I've got wider tires in the back than the fronts and they can't be rotated. Um, I thought I had the sport suspension, so I opted for this configuration. Uh, but it turns out I didn't have the sport suspension anyway, but it doesn't matter. I'm still happy. And yeah, 7.30 seconds in the back. So I've got wheels that allow me to look through them and look right at the brake pad so I can see the amount of thickness that's left on my, my front pads there. And you can see that it's just a, it's a lot of meat that's still left. And the disc looks pretty good. I do see two sort of grooves right there, but I'm not noticing any noise from my front brakes, so I'm, I'm not uh, worried at all. If you can't see through your wheels like this, then you'll have to remove them in order to inspect your pads. Yep, got some meat in the rear there. A lot of meat in the rear. This is positive here, and this is negative over here. Looks like we've got, well, let's call it 12.5. A fully charged battery is going to have 12.6 volts, but I'm more than happy with 12.5. 12.2 would be, you know, really low. That, that would be kind of troublesome. You should take a look at that. Definitely charge it up. But even still, I'm going to go ahead and load test the battery, make sure that it's all good. So this is a battery load tester, guys, and it will allow you to see how many cold cranking amps your battery puts out. So in order to use it, just hook it up to the terminals I also use this to test voltage by the way it's got a voltmeter on it you can see we're well up over 12 it's not exactly uh, super accurate I hate these these analog scales but you know it serves its purpose when you activate the tester it's going to actually draw about 100 amps from the battery and it's going to you're going to see what the voltage drops to and this little scale is here to tell you how many it estimates how many cold cranking amps the battery can put out based on the voltage that it drops to when it's under load so what you do is you hit the button and you wait about six seconds and you see we can see that mine's putting out around 400 cold cranking amps which is not ideal. I want it to be around 600. So you can definitely tell that this, uh, I can definitely tell that this battery is not 100%. 
and uh, I should definitely take a look at, well, you know what? What I'm gonna do is, I'll, since it was at 12.5, I should just go ahead and charge it. I'll go ahead and charge it and I'll do another load test, but this is, uh, this is still a good enough test to tell me that uh, I should probably expect to have to replace my battery in the, not in the near future, but at some point in the future. Definitely you wanna keep your battery fully charged as much as possible. I do a lot of city driving. I hardly do any highway driving. So I, my batteries usually don't get a lot of time to charge themselves completely. So I think just to make sure I'm gonna put a battery charger on this thing and then I'll, I'll do another load test tomorrow morning. But that is how you would do a load test on a battery. I wanna check the pressure on the spare tire. I think that would be a good idea just in case I need to use the thing someday. So what's interesting is it looks like this is a full-size spare tire and it looks like it was used on the car at some point for quite a while. I see brake dust and everything. So huh, that's, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, it looks like it's totally flat. So I'm definitely glad I checked it. I'm gonna charge up my air compressor and add some air. Ooh. Looks like it needs the uh, stem replaced. Oh, actually no, there's a hole in the tire. <laughs> well, I'm actually pissed off about that because I could have kept one of the old tires that I had. Oh darn. Well, that's my bad. I think I'll probably be keeping my eye out in the junkyard for a, uh, a 225 17. I mean, I just need something that holds air. So obviously if my inspection is saying, you know, 7,500 or in, in my case it was 8,500, um, I'm obviously not gonna reset the service indicator because I change my oil every 7,500 miles. So I just leave it alone when it's the 7,500 one and I reset it when it's the 15, uh, when it's the 15,000 one. But since we're calling this the 15,000 inspection, I'm gonna reset it this time. So the way we do that, is we got to hold this button down and we got to turn the key to the one position and it's going to be hard for me to do that and hold the camera but let me hold it and then turn it to the one position and you can see it says test i'm going to keep holding the button down now it says reset i'm going to let go and push it again and hold it we're going to hold it until reset flashes there we go and then i'm going to release and push it again and now it just reset itself so yeah, that's kind of a bummer about the spare tire. I was sorry to discover that, but oh well. Um, since I have the air compressor charged up, I just went ahead and added the, the missing air to the tires because you know, why waste two hours at Costco just to get some nitrogen in my tires? That's kind of stupid. Uh, but anyway, um, hopefully you learn uh, a little bit from this video how to inspect all those things if you didn't know how to do that before. And uh, thanks again for watching.